In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Good morning. It's always good to be with you today. In today's Gospel reading, we hear for the second time Jesus predicting his passion to the disciples. This time, instead of protesting what they heard, they failed to understand what Jesus was saying and were too afraid to ask. And this will be the trend for the, re- for the disciples for the rest of Mark's Gospel, to either deny Jesus' prediction or to not to want to understand what he was telling them out of fear. Fear that they will lose their teacher. Fear that Jesus' prediction is true. And fear that the life that they have been living will end. And fear of what a new future will look like. This part of the passage has made me think of different types of fear. An article I read in Psychology Today describes five different types of fear. Extinction, or the fear of death. Mutilation, or the fear of losing parts of one's body. Loss of autonomy, or fear of loss of control, whether physical or mental. Separation, or a fear of being abandoned, rejected, or loss of connection. And ego death, or the fear of humiliation, shame, or loss of integrity of oneself. Fear can be so strong, it stops us in our tracks. Fear can keep us from progressing forward or trying something new. Fear can be an immobilizing fear, but it can also be helpful. My kids are into gymnastics, which means they love going to trampoline parks. There's one near our house that we have gone to fairly recently And a few short weeks ago, when we arrived, my son announced to me that today he wanted to learn how to do a backflip. I was proud that he'd set this goal for himself and glad that he wanted to do it here in a safe place with nice, with pits full of nice foam padding. So he tried for several minutes to work up the nerve to do a backflip. But later he came to me and said, Dad, I'm mentally prepared to do this, but my body, does, my body does not want to do it. I think he was experiencing a fear of mutilation or extinction through a bad landing of becoming paralyzed or even dying. And I told him, I understand your fear, but I'm sure it's something that you can work through. I asked him if I could help him with his first flip so that he could experience the motion of flying backwards through the air. So we stood together on the platform with his back towards the pit below. He kept looking back and preparing himself. And we both bent over, and on three he jumped up and backwards, and I helped him rotate his legs around. He flew through the air and flipped, right landing safely in the seated position in the foam pit, with a big smile of relief on his face. He had gotten through that first flip. He had overcome his fear. He wanted to try a few more times with me before he was ready for his solo flight. And after a few more assisted flips, he was ready to fly on his own. He moved from the platform to the pit to a trampoline that bounced into another pit. He began bouncing, and when he was ready, he took a big bounce and flipped backwards perfectly into the pit, again smiling at his progress. He did this about a dozen times before he was ready to move on to another trampoline and try a backflip again, but this time landing on his feet in the tra- on the trampoline. He prepared himself by bouncing several times, preparing his body for the flip, knowing that he could and wanted to do it. And when he was ready, he took a deep bounce, flew backwards through the air, and landed on his feet with a big smile of pride and satisfaction. After that, it was all backflips all the time. I'm so proud of him for the acknowledging his fear, but working through it to accomplish the goal he had set for himself. His fear kept him safe from jumping into something he was not prepared for, but it did not stop him. 
And later, we spoke about courage and what it meant. It's not the absence of fear, but rather the acknowledgement of fear and the ability to learn what fear is telling you and to keep you going despite it. Pinson could feel the fear inside of him, but with a little help and encouragement, he was able to push through and learn a new skill. He was able to step outside of his comfort zone, and by doing that, he expanded his comfort zone just a little bit bigger. And that allowed him to try more things, and that will allow him to try more things in the future. And every time he'll do that, he'll increase his confidence to try new things, despite any fear he might feel. I see Jesus is teaching the disciples, he's teaching them to overcome their fear. Their fear of losing a teacher, their fear of leading people on their own, and their fear of moving from a life of earthly things to focus on a life of heavenly things. Jesus wants to prepare them for the rough road ahead so they can move forward despite the fears they have. Jesus wants them to know it will be okay and they need to let go in order to move on. Jesus has been preparing them for the future that is coming. In the passage from the Wisdom of Solomon, what I hear are people who have been crippled by fear. Fear of ego death. They feel that they're unworthy of anything more than death. They know of a righteous man who is coming, but saw themselves as too far gone to be saved. They had, they had resigned themselves to think that their place was one of wickedness, not knowing that they were worth the prize of holiness. They just needed to work through their fear and despair to believe in a life worth living. It is not an easy task to do, and one that can't be done alone. That is why when we find ourselves in a place crippled by fear, we need to push past fear and reach out to those around us for help. It's not easy, and it can be overwhelming, but it can be done. One thing I see as helpful is to follow the advice given in the reading from James. To direct our attention away from earthly things of bitter envy, selfish ambition, and toward pure heavenly things like peace, gentleness with self, and mercy for self and others. We need to remember that we are all God's children, a God of grace and love, and a God whose only son gave up his life so that we could have eternal life in heaven. I like the final line from the passage of James where he says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. We can do that every time we show grace and mercy to ourselves and every time we welcome a stranger in our midst and every time we're open to working through the fear we feel and not letting it control us or stop us. I think our collect of the day, collect of the day, excuse me, says it best. Grant us, O Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.